before I get started, I want to give all praises due to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rekai Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, peace and say, taste to the alchemist, pushing his word in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. This is the brother Zayana Ma from the GMS Detroit by camp. And uh, today it's going to be a lesson dealing with the letter J, right? Maybe a little bit of history of the letter J, right? And um, this is uh, this is uh, basically to highlight the Lord's name, right? Because there are people that are caught up in religion, caught up in these churches, right? No matter what sect they may be, all right? You know, they, they believe in sweet baby Jesus, right? Jesus saves, Jesus this, Jesus that, right? And um, basically, you're calling on a false name. You're calling on an idol, basically, at the end of the day, right? You're calling on a uh, evil spirit, right? Because in terms of the Lord's name, that's not his name, all right? And just like you were to call on anyone out of their name, all right? Nine times out of ten, they should not answer you because that's not their name, all right? For whoever may be watching this video, all right? Whatever your name is, if I was to call you any anything outside of your name, right? You're going to be uh, irked in the spirit, you know? Most likely, you're going to correct me and say, excuse me, you know, who you're talking to? Oh, that's not my name. You know what I'm saying? It, it, there's going to be some correction. So, hey, this video is the correction, all right? You know, because the Lord's name, all right, even though you read the English Bible, and yes, we know it says Jesus, all right, it reads that way, J-E-S-U-S, -S, all right, but do you honestly believe, all right, do you honestly think that, okay, the apostles, all right, the disciples of that time, all right, were calling, all right, you think Peter, all right, was calling uh, who you know, to be Jesus, you think they were saying the name Jesus, hey Jesus, calling on Jesus, no, they couldn't have been one, because English wasn't even around at that time right, the letter J wasn't around at that time nor a, a, a sound to enunciate a word in that fashion, so they, they could not have been saying Jesus right, just because you grew up in this generation, that's what you learned that doesn't make it, you know the truth you know what I'm saying? So you have to take it upon yourself to dig deeper. All right. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick while it's on my spirit. All right. Um, because the, the, the scriptures answer or ask a question. All right. Concerning the Lord's name. And this is Proverbs 30 and 4. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just want to get right to the point. 30 and 4, who have ascended up into heaven or descended, who have gathered the wind in his fist, who have bound the waters in a garment, who have established all the ends of the earth. Right? Who did that? Right? It's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. What is his what is his name? Right? Because all hey, what is his name that did all that? Right? Because you read the scriptures and you will you'll see what think is um you see jehovah right you see the the spelling of what you know to be jehovah right <laughs> so oh that's the lord's name it's it's that easy right? but the scriptures say that this this word is basically likened into a mystery all right it means it, it's secrets all right the knowledge that's in this book is not readily avail available to everyone all right just because you pick up the bit, book and you know, you read some things, that's, right, it may not be, that understanding may not be face value. You know, you may have to, you know, um, pull back some lay layers, so to speak, right? So, anyway, going back, who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. So, that there's a question. Can you tell? Do you know? All right, are you able to tell me what the Lord's name is? All right, are you able to tell me what his son's name is? Hmm, just because you can, right? Now, now only I'm saying this because, like, I've been around people that have done it, call themselves proving a point. You know, they pull out certain scriptures 
right? See, oh, look, see right there, Jehovah. See right there, Jesus. Oh, well, yeah, I can read. <laughs> but the question is, can you comprehend, though? Right? Because we both reading, but it's a comprehension um, disparity there, right? Where, all right, we're not reasoning together. We're not seeing the same thing, though. We're reading the same words, all right? And it's because the understanding is, is, is different, right? We I know, right? Brothers know that, hey, these these scriptures were um, um, trans, transliterated from the Hebrew and the Greek, all right? So to get a better, better understanding, all right, of what certain words mean, what things are saying, names, as such, all right, we, we have to go back to those languages and learn those languages, all right? The Hebrew and the Greek, all right? Starting with the Hebrew, chiefly, all right? So say all that to say, all right, the Lord's name is not Jesus, all right? God's name is not God or Jehovah, all right? Why? Because the letter J, all right, is is a new uh, alphabet, all right, to the English language, all right? <clears throat> so this is just a little history on the letter J, all right? It says, how did J get its sound? Both I and J were used interchangeably by scribes to express the sound of of both the vowel and the consonant. It wasn't until 1524 when Jean, Jean uh, Gior, Giorgio Tresini, Tresino, an Italian Renaissance grammarian known as the father of the letter J, made a clear distinction between the two sounds. All right. So let's see what, what this is all talking about. Let's see. Let's see uh, when when was J added to the alphabet? Okay, J is a bait. Is Slaki reading too fast? It says J is a bit of a late bloomer. After all, it was the last letter added to the alphabet. Now that's that's key. You know, you, you grow up. You grow up right in, in preschool, elementary. You learn your ABCs. And all that, right? So taking account, once upon a time, the J wasn't even there, right? This same English language that you know now, the letter J wasn't, it wasn't there, right? What's that, the 13th letter, I believe? 10th letter or whichever letter, right? <clears throat> yeah, I believe it's the 10th letter way. But uh, it wasn't there once upon a time, right? That was a newly invented in invention, all right, if you will, all right, so <laughs> even what, four or five, or, or should I say, even before four or five hundred years ago, all right, that, that Jesus, that, that was a, a really a new thing, the, the whole name and concept of Jesus is virtually a new thing in terms of history, you know, who our, our Lord, Yahweh, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh was on the scene 2,000 years ago, all right? And no one of his time was calling him Jesus, all right? Period. And here's, that's the point right there. J is a late bloomer. It was the last letter added to the alphabet, you know? But, nigga, you can't, you can't show or teach him nothing, right? Um... So a lot of our people are proud. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see, how did J get its sound? It said both I and J were used interchangeably by scribes to express the sound on both the vowel and the consonant. It wasn't until 1524. Okay, we read this at the head. But it wasn't until 1524 when Jean... Giorgio Tresino, an Italian Renaissance grammarian known as the father of the letter J, made a clear distinction between the two sounds. All right. It said Tresino's contribution is important because once he distinguished the soft J sound as in jam, all right, he was able to identify the Greek Iesus, a translation of the Hebrew Yeshua, which is actually, um, uh, it would be like Joshua, 
right? Joshua, as you know, it is like an English uh, transliteration of how you would say Yahawashai, right? If you were to use English, if that makes any sense, right? Um, so it's not even Yeshua, right? But anyway, as the modern English Jesus, thus the current phonem, phon, phon, phonem, phonem, oh, so not good for that. You see it though. For Jay was born, it always goes back to Jesus, right? It says the English language is infamous for matching similar. Let's look up that word. What is that? How do you say that? Let's see. Can we get phoneme? Phoneme. Okay. I'm gonna sound like phony, but uh. So basically, the sound of a of a of a thing, the sound of a letter or a word, right? Um, the English language is infamous for matching similar phonemes with different letters, and J is certainly no exception. In addition to the information soft J, sound as in jam, which is phonetically identical to the soft G as in general, the J. And Taj Mahal may, takes on a slight variation of the same sound and is probably the closest to Trusino's original phonetic interpretation. And coming full circle, the J sound you hear in the word hallelujah, right? That's hallelujah, right? Nobody really says hallelujah. You know, even in the church, Christian church, it's natural to say Hallelujah, you know, because that's actual Hebrew, right? At its finest, that's that's Hebrew you're speaking. You're not speaking English at that point. When you say hallelujah, right, you're saying praise the most high power. Praise him, right? The him being Yahweh, right? And because he's everything, right? It's pronounced hallelujah, God, right? And going back, all right, to Yahweh Shai, all right? That's is simply put, that's how you would say it, Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, some other fun facts, All right? Because um, it's no coincidence that, you know, the uh, the Bible always turns us, right, to the Hebrew. It always highlights the Hebrew, right, the Hebrew tongue. You know, why would the Bible say that? Why is that important, you know? Simply put, that's that's where our origin, all right? The origin of us being a nation, all right, is um is rooted, all right, in our language. You know, you know, for us to communicate, right, you, you gotta know a language, right? For us to talk to one another and to share ideas to communicate, right? A, a language has to be established, all right? And that language that that has been established, all right, was the Hebrew, right? That's the, the Hebrew is basically the, the, the spiritual tongue, all right? That's the tongue of the heavens, all right? That's the tongue that the Heavenly Father, His Son, the angels, they all speak in, okay? Don't get it twisted, all right? So just pulling up, you know, Hebrew tongue, you know, that we, we see this in here, right? You know, a number of times, right? Um, here we go to highlight a point here. Let's see. This is Acts 26 and 14. All right, because hey, uh, Paul, all right, he was uh, basically uh, directly tutored, schooled, all right, in the spirit by Yahweh Shai himself, all right? So. So, you know, he would know he was a great candidate, all right, to select because Paul, you know, he was, he was, he was wise. He was, uh, uh, you know, well taught. He went, you know, he went to school, this, that, and the third, get a, 
uh, education, if you will, right? Knew several languages. So he's a great candidate to, to choose and, um, and, um, you know, basically bringing in the Gentile, the Gentile foreigners, Israelite foreigners, all right? Israelites, they didn't know that they were Israelites, all right? Because they were, um, you know, basically scattered, right? The diaspora, all right? Our nations were, or our tribe, the tribes were scattered, you know, due to the curses that were put on us for not listening to the Heavenly Father, or for not following His way. So one one of the curses were was to be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, and in process of time, right, generation from generation, right, those former generations, um, or the latter generation, should I say, um, basically discontinued from their heritage, right? They they didn't know the customs of of being a Hebrew, right? They they grew up in their current way of life, just how it is here in America. All right, <clears throat> you know, you're born here in America and the customs that you learn here, you believe, oh, well, well, that's that's part of my heritage. That's my culture. That's what I'm supposed to do when well, that's not the case. All right. So um, real quick, this is uh, Acts 26 and 14. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. You know, and, and just something that somebody have to ask, like, why, you know, why was that written that way? Why was it important to say that, right? Because we have to look at, right, who's, who is Paul talking to, who name was Saul at the time, but this is dealing with Paul, all right? Who was he speaking to, all right? And also, the person that was speaking to him, what language was he using? All right, he did come to him. Now, mind you, Paul knew Hebrew, all right, Greek and Latin. He was fluent in all three languages. All right, being Yahweh Shai, he can speak in any language he, he choose to. You know, he, he know everything. <laughs> but um, why did he make a point? All right, to speak him, speak to him in the Hebrew as well as this be scribed. You know, to say the Hebrew tongue because it's important. It's key. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it, it's all it's basically like a um, a roadmap, if you will, back to the heavenly Father's right name. You know, it's it's a clue, if you will, right? It says, "Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks." And I said, "Who art thou, Lord?" Right? And he said, "I am." As you read here, Jesus. Right, but we know, hey, he was saying all of this in the Hebrew tongue. So when he when he said his name, you can best for sure believe he said Yahweh. Oh, I'm Yahweh. You know what I'm saying in the Hebrew, right? I'm Yahweh, whom thou persecutest. All right. So the Lord's name is not Jesus. Okay. His Father's name is not Jehovah. All right. The Father's name is Yahweh. All right. Again, when you say hallelujah, you basically give you paying the homage, you praising the most high in the in the in, uh, in the essence of his name, the essence of who he is, you know. Yah, he, him. Right? Because Yahweh means he exists. Right? He lives, he exists. So, um, I don't want this video to be too long. But um hopefully you know this this sparks uh, you know, firing your spirit to maybe inquire, right? If you don't, if you're not already familiar with the name, right? You're um, curious about the name or, um, you know, just not sure what the, the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son is, all right? The only names that they respond to, all right, are Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, all right? So you were to call on the Heavenly Father and the Son, all right, you have to call on Yahweh in the name of his son. So you would say Yahweh by Hashem, which means in the name Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So with that, I want to give all praises due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, Doma honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, and peace and salutation to the Akim that's pushing his word in truth and sincerity. 
throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.